Well, hello, I'm Bob Weir with another interview of People in the News in North Texas. My guest today is Jake Lee Lucky Nelson, a 16-year-old Highland Village resident who has a goal of becoming a commercial airline pilot. Uh, shall I refer to you as Lucky? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Well, Lucky, let's begin by telling our viewers when you began your quest to become a pilot. I began from what I remember the age of three. Um, my dad's a business consultant um, and basically travels uh, around the United States a lot, sometimes out of the country. So we would always go to the airport and bring him there. So I was always around planes, always around the airport. And so just kind of from there, my dream kind of sparked to be a pilot, just of seeing these amazing machines being able to fly. You know, it's just something that really fascinated me and something I really wanted to do. Yeah, well, that, well, aviation is uh, is a great career, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm always fascinated. Every time I fly, I'm still fascinated that I'm up on this giant vehicle in the air and and taking me at uh, at speeds of hundreds of uh, miles per hour. Um, let me ask you, when and where did you take your first lesson? I took my first lesson, well, I had my first discovery flight when I went to an aviation camp when, um, I think it was like two or three summers ago. Um, I had my discovery flight there, and then I started taking lessons down in Addison at Monarch Air. Hmm. Um, so just so uh, to give some information to people who are watching, uh, uh, how does someone achieve a pilot's license? Um, to get your pilot's license, the first thing you want to start off with is you have to get a uh, medical, which is basically making sure you're medically fit to fly an airplane. Um, after that, you would go onto like the FAA website and register for a student pilot's license to be able to just fly in general with an instructor. Um, and then from there, you can start lessons and doing that. At the age of 16, you can solo, which is what I did on my 16th birthday. And then when you're 17, you can go for your check ride and then get your license. And then from there, there's a, there's a ton of directions you can go, um, a ton of different ratings and stuff like that to get you up to flying commercial jets. Uh, so uh, you can, can you take lessons at any age? Yeah, in any age. Really? Um, and, but when you take your first solo flight, you have to be 16? You don't have to be 16. That's like the minimum age requirement. It is. Wow. What is that like? I mean, that is amazing. Um, What's it like? Solo to... Yeah. It's, it's a really surreal experience. It's not really like driving a car alone where you're just on the road, just listening to music. It's like a lot of hands-on, which it always is because I never, I'm always hands-on with the aircraft, but um, you know, it's silent, but you're just in this, crazy concentration of just making sure everything around you is the way it's supposed to be. Um, on my so first solo flight, I almost had an incident with an aircraft that um, on departure, we're supposed to fly in a certain pattern when we're just doing like work at an airport or just doing practicing landings. For my first solo flight, I was supposed to take off three times and land three times. And so at Mesquite, um, they'll tell you a oh, left traffic or right traffic, which means circle on a left pattern over the airport or a right pattern. And this aircraft was told to go left, but instead started going right. And at that time, I had just gotten airborne. So when he started to fix his mistake going to the left, he was at the center of the runway this way, and I was hitting him, and I was going this way. So I had to follow his path behind him to create space as well as make sure I didn't hit him. Because if I kept going straight, I would have hit him. Uh, and so it's it's really those split second decisions, even though nobody's in the cockpit, you know, you gotta be as responsible as can be because you're the only person there, you're monitoring yourself. Wow, that's amazing. You know, I mean, I can't be more impressed to think at 16, you're alone in the cockpit of that plane. Wow, that's fabulous. You know, when I was 16, I was, I was wondering if I was going to get through high school. I mean, that was my big concern. <laughs> uh, so you're a precocious young man. That's 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 wonderful to see that. Um, all right. So we're talking about now. You mentioned the um, medical requirements. So is that is that physical requirements too? I mean, do you have to have a certain it's, amount of strength? Or? It's medical and physical. Just making sure you have like proper eyesight. You have like proper, you know, body functionality. Just making sure you know you can make all correct movements and stuff like that. 
Yeah. It's basically just making sure you're functional, you're fit, you can see, you can do everything without harming yourself or harming the aircraft. Yeah, um, evidently you have to uh, you have to be able to think quick and move quickly, as you discovered when you were up there, and you had to think quickly and make a quick move. Uh, thank God it went it went well. Um, <laughs> So, uh, and as far as uh, academic education, uh, to be an aviator, do you have to have a certain amount of schooling? It, it really depends. When you're taking flight lessons, you're just not always flying. You do ground lessons, which is learning just about everything about the aircraft and other things, weather related or ground related. There's a ton of things that go into aviation that isn't flying. And it's kind of crazy to think think but um right now i'm doing a ton of studying to take my written test and so it's it's a ton of things you have to know not just how to fly an airplane but to know what weather sources are bad you know what you do at an airport emergency stuff like that it's it's a lot of stuff that goes into it that actually makes it safe yeah so and how about the uh, is it uh, are there academic requirements like a college degree or something that Aviate has to have? Airlines like four-year degrees is what I've seen. That's what airlines want. I don't think it's a requirement, but that's what kind of airlines want from you. Just to fly in general, like small airlines or small carriers, I don't think you would need that. You just need the certain pilot certifications to fly. But it really all depends on experience or how much you know that airlines want. Yeah, uh, I suppose it just it has so much to do with doing it over and mm -hmm. over and over and over. Um, uh, let me ask you, are, are there any other pilots in your family? There are not. I'm the first of my kind for my family. Good for you. Uh, that's great. That's great. You'll be, you'll be the first. Yes, sir. Um, Lucky, your, your mom said you can tell every plane in the sky at any given moment and that you speak with a knowledge and language that only pilots understand. Can you give me an example? I think you already have mentioned some. Obviously, you, you do know a lot. <laughs> so. so what she means by like the language of the pilots is it's called the phonetic alphabet. And that's basically turning like your ABCs into Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, so on and so forth. And that's basically how we talk, you know, when we're taxiing down at the airport, there's certain, like, say there's like a roadway name, we have taxiway names. So like, say like, I'm told to taxi down A or Alpha, I have to go down that certain way. And that's how basically things are named as well as like aircraft names, so like uh, all aircraft are required to have a registration. And so you'll see that like at the backs of aircraft, like a certain number set starting with N or depending on what country they're in, it'll have their own um, registration. But basically, that's all done and said by the phonetic alphabet. So like in 184AA would go into November 184 Alpha Alpha. Oh, so, um, well, um, well you, got, you have all of the nomenclature down. Uh, you, certainly, uh, you certainly sound like a pilot already. Um, <laughs> let, me, um, let me ask you a little about the, um, you mentioned a written test. There's a written yes. test you have to take, and it's... Uh, how, what is that like? I mean, is it like a lot of questions, hundreds of questions? So what, what I've heard so far is there's a certain amount of sections on the written test, but it's mixed up. So like you're given um, a book like to study and stuff like that. They'll, they'll give you, or for what I've heard, they'll give you like a sheet to like uh, show different figures, charts and stuff like that to answer questions. Um, but it's 500 questions, but the same sections are on the test. So it's just 500 different questions, but some of them are the same thing. Some of them aren't, but the gist of it is all there. And it's basically just a ton of stuff you need to know. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, you, you know, just the, uh, it seems to me just the idea that you could fly solo at 16. <laughs> it's, you would think that, that you could get a pilot's license just from doing that. I mean, how come, you know, if, if you could do it, then you did it and you landed the plane, you took off, you landed and so forth. So uh, what, what is, um, you know, you want to be a commercial airline pilot. What, is there a, an age approximation you have to be to get that? Um, it really all just depends on experience. Like I said, with the college degree and everything, airlines, wanting a four-year degree, you know, you'd probably be in a big jet at commercial airlines, maybe by the time you're 30. Yeah. It's, it's just a lot of experience and just flying over and over again that airlines like. 
as well as having different ratings after your private pilot's license and just everything. Airlines want absolute experience and just um, training that you have. You have to have all this education, all this training, and just experience for them to really want you. Yeah. Well, you know, um, as I said before, I'm I'm in awe of anyone that can fly their own plane. I mean, you were up there by yourself, and it it, it scares people. Uh, most people who uh, haven't had your experience and uh, your drive to get there. Uh, so that's uh, that's an amazing feat in and of itself. I can't even imagine <laughs> being up there and and uh, you know fighting gravity. I'd be I'd be afraid that uh, you know that's the end. That would be the end of me. But anyway, yeah. it's, it's wonderful to talk to you. Uh, it was well. And see a young man that has um, such drive and such ambition. Um, we are coming to the close, Lucky. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, really, just whatever drive you have, what you want to do, just just go for it. As long as you have that motivation and just kind of that drive to do it and that passion, just go for it. They're like with being a pilot there is a lot of road bumps of, uh, of, along the way. You do make mistakes and you just learn from everything you do. There's a lot of learning, a lot of studying and just a ton of work to be where you want to be. But as long as you have that motivation and drive, you can just easily get there. Yeah, it's a, it does take drive. It takes uh, ambition and, um, and, and having the desire. I mean, you just, you've had this desire I understand since you were like three years old from what I can remember. Amazing, amazing. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Lucky, and uh, uh, I'd be looking forward to hearing when you get your, your license, when you pass that test, and you, yes, uh, sir. you become a pilot. And who knows, one day I may be flying on a plane that you're, you're <laughs> that you're on. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you up. <laughs> yeah, um, thanks for being a positive example for uh, so many others who seek to achieve major goals in their life. Of course. Good to meet you. Say hi to your family. I will. Thank you, Mr. Weir. Have a great weekend. You as well.